Anyone who plays games will at some point have tried to explore beyond the edge of the map to see what's to be seen if you strike out for the limits of the world, like Scott of the Antarctic but with less freezing to death and more snacks. I'm too old for treks that long. What we intrepid explorers find when we try to escape is usually nothing more exciting than an invisible wall or notice to turn back, but some games are notable for being completely extra in the way they keep you confined within the game world. Here are the ways games got really creative when it came to stopping you escaping them. Nothing fun happens in the desert. Dehydration, sand in your shoes, Burning Man, with the sole and shining exception of motocross. Which is probably why 1998's Motocross Madness, a physics-heavy bike sim developed for PCs by Rainbow Studios, sets its gas-guzzling action in the middle of a series of vast desert expanses. Full of dunes and rocky outcrops, these environments were all the better for ramping your motocross bikes off of, a virtual taste of the gravity-defying thrill that real motocross racers experience, with none of the smashed skeleton that comes when you invariably stack it into the side of a small cliff. Indeed, two thoughts will have occurred to anyone who played Motocross Madness. First, holy wow, this sport is dangerous, and second, holy wow, this sport is difficult, I can't keep up with these AI racers, screw this, I'm off exploring. Gun it towards the horizon for long enough, and eventually you'll get to an imposing cliff face, seemingly the boundary of the playable area. And indeed, attempt to ride up it, and you'll probably end up smearing your racer across the unyielding rocky facade. If you valued your free time, this was probably the point where you gave up and went back to the actual game. But it's 1998, baby! All I have is free time, and a Pogs collection that isn't holding its value as well as I'd been promised. Who wants to live forever? Let's do this! Ow. Oh. Nearly made it. Come on. Woohoo! Make it up the cliff and your reward was an entirely new environment. Flat territory as far as the eye can see. Looks like you successfully escaped motocross madness. Yeah, no, in a frankly inspired bit of programming, any player who got close to the edge of the game would discover a secret explosive trap that sent them hurtling clear across the map, complete with a comedy whistle that belied quite how fatal this would be to your poor rider. Look, at least you got some sweet views out of it. And hey, being out in nature, just you the bike and this incredible sunset, isn't that what motocross is all about? Beautiful. Just beautiful. Head over to the beach. Stay on track, no man. Those are shark infested waters. Crisis is a graphically intense shooter, better remembered for its sarcastically demanding hardware requirements than its story. Shoots on my command! Go! But this isn't so surprising, seeing as from the moment hero Jake Nomad Dunn parachutes into fictional Langshang Islands, all you'll want to do is gaze lovingly at the beautiful scenery that surrounds you on all sides, designed to draw admiring oohs and ahs for its lush foliage and stunning vistas, and also to melt your graphics card into a puddle. They spotted KP patrols down on the beach. Use your binocs to tag them before you run in fire. The game makes an effort to draw you into its story, which is something to do with aliens and involves shooting a whole load of folks for presumably vital reasons. But with an environment this lush, just begging to be explored, don't be surprised if your mind starts to wander by the time you've blasted through your nth outpost packed with baddies. Making it even harder to stay on mission is the fact that Crisis has perhaps the single most beautiful ocean environment ever seen in a game. And when you factor in that Jake can breathe underwater, well, sorry archaeologists who sent out the distress call that brought us here, saving you can wait. I mean, I do hope they're not hurt or anything. Oh my god, a crab! Eee! 
Having clocked that the ocean is yours to explore and positively lovely, you'll surely be tempted to swim out and see what lies beyond the reef that marks the extremity of your map. The good news is, when you get to that reef, there's no invisible wall to stop you, like you'd find in so many games. The bad news is that the developers chose a much more terrifying way to prevent map escape. Stray too far or too deep into the ocean, and before long you'll become prey for one of the great white sharks patrolling the borders of the game. And they love the taste of nanosuits, apparently. Maybe it's just the extremely good lighting, or the way the shark dispassionately circles you as you swim further and further from the permitted area of the game, but we found this method of keeping you from escaping crisis properly creepy. Come on, there's gotta be something in this nano suit for this situation! Guess not. From the youngest child to the oldest nagging grandma, none shall escape my fists of fury! Damn you, Belvedere! You've corrupted both the young and the old! You'd be forgiven for forgetting the 2006 Family Guy video game, as we hope we can be forgiven for reminding you of it. Well, splendid! This calls for a sexy party! <laughs> Damn! Released for the original Xbox and PlayStation 2, the appropriately titled Family Guy video game charted a madcap adventure for the Griffin family that perfectly captured the spirit of the animated series, assuming the spirit of the animated series was fiddly platforming and interminable forced stealth sections. Who's rule? I bet if I hid under this desk they couldn't see me at all. The game was critically panned upon release, but it did have one good idea, a solid joke about the nature of video game exploration. <laughs> You'll find this moment at a point in the game where the player first takes control of show patriarch Peter Griffin, who's in the process of beating up screenfuls of children and elderly people for reasons we don't fully understand because the game had one other good idea, and that was skippable cutscenes. I can't believe you're pregnant again. God, didn't you? Peter's sections of the game play out in the vein of classic side-scrolling brawlers like Streets of Rage, and as such you're more or less confined to moving only in one direction as you hammer the attack buttons. Officer down! But should you try to break free of the game's constraints, well, this is what you find. Damn these mimes and their invisible walls! Ha, okay, that's pretty good. Even if we don't like the idea that every invisible wall in a game is actually down to a mime. This hobby is supposed to be my happy place. Can we not fill it with mimes? Captain Wesker, where's Chris? Stop it! Don't open that door! But Chris is... What is it? Maybe it's Chris. Resident Evil is perhaps the most acclaimed and spine-tingling horror series in all of video games, a fact all the more surprising when you consider the very first game began like this. Barry Burton. Rebecca Chambers. I would watch this sitcom, that's all I'm saying. The very first Resident Evil game also begins with the Special Tactics and Rescue Service, or STARS, investigating a crashed helicopter, which they quickly find to be surrounded by a pack of monstrous dogs, or at least one monstrous dog hand puppet that is working very hard. The survivors flee to a mansion where the game begins proper, and it quickly becomes apparent that there are much greater horrors lurking within the walls of this creaky old house than there were in the grounds outside. Horrors including, but not limited to, a mutant bioweapon and scores of bloodthirsty zombies. With the mansion proving exceptionally deadly, you'd be forgiven for thinking, why don't Jill and pals just leave the house the way they came in and avoid all this drama? Indeed, the front door to the mansion is right there, unlocked. Developer Capcom could have simply locked it or made the door an uninteractive piece of scenery, but bless them, they built in something a bit special. Zombie dogs! The same ones that chased you to the mansion, presumably, and a neat way of scaring players trying to get out the easy way. This lesson is especially harsh in the game's remake, where one of the dogs actually gets in and can kill you if you're not careful. 
It's a creative way of stopping players escaping the mansion, though frankly, if the outside is just a roiling mass of zombie dogs, we'll take our chances indoors. At least here, we're safe from zombie dogs. Ah, nuts. <laughs> Sailors are traditionally a superstitious lot, afraid of mermaids, fond of cats, and holding a completely unscientific dislike of the ocean turning blood red and sinking their ship. Too bad, then, that this is exactly the fate that awaits any shipmate who tries to sail beyond the bounds of the map in Sea of Thieves, an online pirate simulator, or MM Heave Ho RPG, if you will. Oh, you won't? Oh, okay. Well, there's no need to take that tone. Unfortunately, curiosity about what lies beyond the reaches of your sea chart is a trait common to every pirate, simulated or otherwise, and so every Sea of Thieves player will at some point turn their prow to face the unknown and sail off the face of the game world. Your first clue that perhaps you should have stayed within the confines of the map is the sea getting very heavy indeed, and more worryingly turning a deep scarlet as does the sky. The next clue is that something unseen starts taking huge chunks out of your ship, dealing massive audible damage from below. Skilled privateers may be able to patch up the damage below decks and bail out incoming waters long enough to turn the ship about and sail back to safety, but this kind of seamanship is hard to summon when you're too busy screaming ah and waiting for your hull to collapse. Oh well, at least now we know, as does the unwilling crew of any online players you choose to drag off the edge of the world. We suggest asking permission first, it's only polite. I'm just looking at this person like, yes. Yeah, Everything is getting Ubi very things. red and scary oh, here, God. Andy. I think you're sailing to hell. End yeah. of the world. Could just be sunset. I mean, you know, it's quite blood red. Yeah. Abandoned Abandon ship. ship? No way! You're a bad captain, Andy. I am a bad captain. Bad is captain. your ship just disintegrating? They're bailing you out cowards. water. Our complete lack of understanding of what's going on below deck is, is sort <laughs> of adding to the mystery. What's going on down there. I mean, it's just water, I Someone assume. else will take the wheel. Yeah, yeah they'll, they will. they'll take us oh, off. Oh, yeah, we are full of oh, water. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think your ship exploded, yeah. basically. Oh. And now Where's the rest of my crew? Well, fellas, where are we going next? <laughs> In the darkness for PS3 and Xbox 360, you play one Jackie Estacado, a man possessed by an ancient demon called the Darkness, whose evil tendrils he uses to tear apart his enemies. But don't let that fool you into thinking Jackie doesn't also enjoy the more sophisticated things in life. He's a music lover, for instance. Now my buddy with the harmonica, he's an honest-to-God virtuoso. So my suggestion is that you leave him alone and let him do his thing. And if I don't? Well, if you don't, I got a magic trick for you. I see you around here again. I'll put my arm down your throat and pull a rabbit out your ass. Oh, wow. And he's also into magic. Like I say, a real patron of the arts. Another of Jackie's passions is trying to break free of his own video game. Or at least that's the only explanation we can think of for the very extra way this 2007 adventure punishes you if you try to wander off. For instance, down the subway tunnels you'll encounter early in the game. Now, this is clearly not where you're supposed to be headed, so what you'd expect to find down this tunnel here, besides rat droppings, is just an invisible wall. And yet, nothing seems to be stopping you from venturing forth, even if the darkness itself isn't keen. This is a good Hmm. When even the ancient demon possessing you thinks you've strayed too far, it's really time to turn around. But keep going and you'll trigger a cutscene that shows, well, what you'd expect to happen when you sprint down a subway tunnel, to be honest. Okay, being smushed flat by a subway train might seem like the lazy way of killing players who wander off, but consider this. Walk the other way down the tunnel, and this time you'll get a cutscene where you're also killed by a train, but one barreling into you from behind. Nice touch! See? It's the little things. And the, the, the big things, like the, the big train. It 
it was the early noughties when all sports were extreme, all punk was pop, and if you weren't living on the edge, you were taking up too much room. Here we go! Into this pop culture renaissance roared Splashdown, a game with the bold vision to pair the racing of personal watercraft with the hit music of Smash Mouth, which we can't play you for copyright reasons, but is already stuck in your head now from just seeing it written down. Sorry. Splashdown featured high octane racing, bouncy water physics, and a soundtrack of only 12 songs, two of which were by Sum 41. But for players really looking to get in too deep, we recommended sacking off the race entirely and pointing your jet ski out towards the wide blue ocean. If you don't mind a fat lip, that is, and can summon the motivation. Motivation is also a Sum 41 song. Because this is where, if you tried to get too far from the course, this happened. Yes, you saw that right. In Splashdown, straying far enough from the marked course would eventually earn you a slap from a vast sea monster, which would drag you down to Davy Jones's locker for presumably thinking better of it and flinging you back where you came from. Ow! Hang on, this looks and sounds familiar. Was Splashdown also developed by Rainbow Studios? Huh, it was. Man, those folks really planted their flag in the whole flung across the map thing. Guess they were in too deep. Oh, wait, I did that one. So those were just some of the creative ways that games kept you within their boundaries and stopped you from wandering off and breaking things. <laughs> so they broke you. <laughs> if you can think of any other examples, let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, do consider giving us a thumbs up. Uh, those are always appreciated. And if you enjoyed this, maybe subscribe. Uh, we do weekly list videos like this. We also, here on Outside Extra and on Outside Xbox, do weekly shows where we just chat about video games uh, called Show of the Week and show of the weekend maybe you will enjoy them uh, but for the meantime thank you so much for watching and we'll let you out now you can go all right bye <laughs>